This was a suggestion a subscriber of mine sent in, and I want to thank them for the idea. Jackal is a band who almost seemed like the antithesis of what was happening in rock music when they became popular in the early 90s. The bands who dominated the rock charts at the time heavily consisted of alternative rock acts singing about social causes or the harsh realities of life. Jackal didn't take themselves so seriously as they're a southern metal band who sang about the pleasures of life including sex, partying, and having a good time. Their musical themes seem to be more in line with the glam metal bands of the Sunset Strip than the Pacific Northwest, but not everyone was happy with Jackal, including major retailers like Kmart, who had an issue with the band's debut album. I mean, these guys were so bold they had a song called She Loves My Expletive. But being the badasses they are, Jackal didn't take it lying down and got revenge in a very timeless way. That's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Jackal hailed from Kennesaw, Georgia, a suburb of Atlanta. The group's music was heavily influenced by the likes of Leonard Skinner and ACDC. They soon developed a reputation for being a hard partying band, and it sometimes landed them in trouble. Frontman Jesse James Dupree was arrested in 1993 for dropping his pants on stage and fined $1,500. The same year Dupree posed for Playgirl in their Sexiest Rockers issue, and while the photos probably earned the band some more female fans, it also cost the group an important business deal. Director Penelope Spheris, who directed Beverly Hillbillies, was in negotiations with Jackal to write and perform the film's title track. After the magazine photos got published, Spheris pulled the plug on the deal. It was a weird move considering that actress Erica Olniak, the actress playing Ellie Mae, was the Playboy Playmate of the Month for July of 1989. Dupree would tell the Morning Call newspaper, I don't understand why it's worse for a man to pose naked in a magazine than a woman. I was told I wasn't the right image. That would be okay except Penelope obviously didn't hold it against Olniak for getting naked in a men's magazine. In addition to that controversy, Bon Jovi also refused to have the band as an opening act. Jackal would sign with Geffen Records in the early 90s and the label would put out their self-titled debut record in 1992. The record would go platinum thanks in large part to five singles, all of which charted in the top 40 on the mainstream rock charts in America including The Lumberjack, I Stand Alone, Down On Me, Dirty Little Mind and When Will It Rain. Released in August of 1992, the band's debut record's lyrical themes and cover art was deemed too indecent for Kmart to sell the album. The band didn't take the move lightly, taking a flatbed trailer into the parking lot of a Marietta, Georgia Kmart where they performed an afternoon concert in June of 1992. The band would film the video for the single I Stand Alone during that show, and Dupree would tell the morning call in 1993. The bottom line is, this parental advisory sticker sucks. I mean, hell, young people can turn the TV on and see the damnest stuff, but they go in to buy a rock and roll record and they can't buy it because they're not 18 years old? That's stupid. That is pure ignorance, he'd say. An ex-guitarist Jimmy Stiff would tell Legendary Rock Interviews what went down the day they filmed the I Stand Alone video, saying, We announced on the radio we were going to be there indirectly, and we played till the law came and shut us down. They told Jesse if he could get everybody to leave without starting a fuss, they'd let us go. So we got the cops bullhorn and said, Cops say we have to leave, see you all across town. Everyone left, we left, took the party elsewhere, and today on the way here, the Georgia 120 Tavern and Music Hall, we drove by the scene of the crime, that old Kmart. It's not a Kmart anymore. The video was made, I stand alone. We blew up a van for that. The record company gave us five grand to buy an old van to blow up, but we decided to blow up our own van and buy another one with that money. We used dynamite. That's me in the video driving the orange van, he'd say. It would be ironic that after all these years, Kmart is no longer around, but Jackal is still rocking to this very day. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again on Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.